This is the 2023 Porsche Cayman GT4 RS, the latest and greatest from Porsche. That is a 2019 GT3 RS driven by my buddy Phil. <laughs> So Phil, tell me a little bit about your GT3 RS. So this is my 2019 GT3 RS. So the factory kind of options that were spec with this car are the Porsche carbon ceramics, as well as the bucket seats. And it, of course, um, the RS is only coming to PDK. So it's a seven speed PDK and it has the four liter flat six um, from the factory. It has about 520 horsepower at the crank. So this is the 2023 Porsche Cayman GT4 RS. And one of the questions I get asked very frequently is how does this compare to my former GT3 RS? If you're watching this video, you probably already know all about Porsche GT cars. You've probably seen the numerous reviews online. You know that the Cayman and the GT3 RS both share a very similar four liter flat six that revs to 9,000 RPM paired with the lightning fast Porsche's PDK transmission. You likely know that the Porsche GT3 RS based off the 911 platform is rear engined while the Cayman GT4 RS is mid engined because it is based off of the 718 Cayman platform. And if you are a Porsche enthusiast, you've likely seen all of the other YouTube reviews on this car already by Doug DeMuro, Top Gear, Road and & Track, and several other professional car reviewers. And you might expect the conclusion of my review to be similar. Three, two, one. GT4 RS. And I would get this over any 911. I, I just... But don't be so sure. Let's first analyze the fact that most of the YouTube videos out right now are comparing the 992 GT3 RS to the 2023 Cayman. This is because the 992 GT3 RS just came out. And to better understand why the 2019 GT3 RS is a better comparison to the 2023 GT4 RS, all you have to do is open the frunk. Front trunk space on Porsche cars obviously is not a new thing, but the 992, the new GT3 RS, actually lacks a frunk altogether, making it significantly less practical than the 2019, especially if you have a roll cage in the back. The Cayman, on the other hand, has plenty of front storage space and storage space in the rear. Another big factor is the price. Interested in purchasing a new 992 GT3 RS? Well, think again, you're gonna have to pay roughly $175,000 over the original MSRP price of the car to find one on the secondhand market. This car is still way overpriced on the secondhand market. These are still going for fifty dollars to $100,000 over sticker price. But when you compare the market to the 2019 car, the prices online right now are actually very comparable. You can find one of these for anywhere between the 220 to 270 range, and this car follows suit. So the 2019 GT3 RS has less aero and less gadgets, but does that really mean it's a compromised car compared to the 992 GT3 RS? I wish I had one here to tell you, but what I can say is that no matter which car you're driving, if you're taking it out on a nice Sunday drive on a back road, it is not going to matter <laughs> how much area you have. It's going to come down to your skills as a driver. The interiors on both of these cars are remarkably similar. They take on Porsche's GT car philosophy of minimalist design and maximum function. Like Phil said earlier, he has the carbon bucket seats. Well, my car is a fairly base spec with the 18-way adjustable seats. They do a very good job of holding you in, but if you're going to be tracking your car frequently, the buckets, well, they just look cool and they obviously hold you in very well. Aesthetically, the GT3 RS is a little wider, looks a little more aggressive, and obviously has a lot more aero implemented into the design. The GT4 RS sports a lot of the same aero bits as the GT3. Obviously, we have the same knockaducts for brake cooling, we have the uh, vents over the front tires, and we have the swan neck wing at the back. Both cars are available from factory with the optional lightweight YSAC package, which shaves a few pounds off of both cars, but it mostly adds a bunch of carbon fiber bits to impress your friends. 
Since the GT4S is my personal car, and this is a personal review, let me explain what initially drew me to the GT4 RS. why this car is brilliant you have to experience it and of course one of the biggest features on this car is that noise yes oh it's so good it's so raw what Porsche has done on this car is inconvenienced the driver and removed the two rear quarter windows that you would normally look out to see vehicles in your blind spot and replaced them with air intakes. When you start to apply a little bit of throttle pressure, you can hear the air being sucked into those intakes right behind your ears. And as you apply that throttle more and more, that sound just gets louder and louder. Now, everybody who reviews these cars says the word induction noise, induction noise. Well, I don't think they ever really explain what that actually means. Yes, it is the sound of the car inducting air into the engine. However, what that does is when you apply enough throttle pressure, the throttle body on the car fully opens and you get the, all of that sound returned right back into the cabin. So that's why the interior of this car is so loud once you're on the throttle. One thing that's character of the GT3 engine, which is in this car, is that insane eight to 9,000 RPM shriek. The tone changes and it's so unique, but it's also great because you know exactly when to change gears. The sound is raspy in my opinion. There's not a lot of oomph to it. It's more just shouting in your ears. So the Cayman sings brilliantly, but how does it ride and how does it handle? The suspension on the car is extremely firm as you might expect from one of Porsche's RS cars. However, I would say that this is actually more stiff than the GT3 RS. And my guess is that's potentially due to the shorter wheelbase and smaller tires on the car. But like Porsche's GT cars, it's still extremely smooth on a proper road that's well maintained. When you're cornering, you're not being jostled about. The car is extremely planted. It's not exactly a fun car to drive about in downtown Denver or the poorly maintained highways around the city. Uh, but when you get on a road like this, it hardly matters. The engine in this car is mounted in the middle of the vehicle, giving the car a 50-50 weight distribution. Now, those numbers sound great on paper, but what does that actually mean for its ability to go around corners? But before I do that, I want to mention that it is essential that if you're going to drive one of these cars to the limits, or even enjoy it for what it's designed to do, you should get an alignment on the car when you get it. Because these cars have a very non-aggressive alignment on them from the factory designed to save your tires. What I opted for in this car was a street track alignment. So not something so aggressive that the car is tracking all over the place and I can't drive it straight on a, on a bumpy road, um, but also something that uh, is a little more aggressive so it bites super well into the turns. I have roughly two and a half degrees of camber in the front and two degrees in the back. This car is also on very sticky uh, Michelin Cup 2 tires. I noticed that the factory alignment on the GT4 RS uh, caused the car to actually understeer and scrub in the corners a little bit upon a corner entry. However, now the car just hooks right into the turns. The car doesn't understeer now with the current setup and the steering wheel translates the corners so nicely. It's very, very easy to place this car on the road. 
from my former experience, the bite on this car into the turns is not quite as aggressive as the GT3 RS. This is very possibly due to the fact that the GT3 RS has all wheel steering and this does not. So yes, the GT4 RS enters corners in a very composed manner. But perhaps more impressive is the way it exits turns. Because of the 50-50 weight distribution, you can get on the throttle way earlier in this car and even earlier than you can in the GT3 RS. And the car remains composed and stable as you exit the turn. It's very hard to unhook this vehicle. And even when you do get a little squirrely in this car, if you have the traction control on, the car knows how to sort itself out. You don't really feel any unusual characteristics. The back end might slide a little bit, uh, or it just feels a little unstable if you just are uncoordinated in a turn. However, it's extremely recoverable and not really scary at all. But what does that mean in comparison to Porsche's naturally aspirated halo car, the GT3 RS? This thing is outfitted with a full IPE exhaust. So needless to say, sound so much. The sound that comes from the GT3 RS is very soulful. You feel that 520 horsepower flat six rattle every bone in your body until you get to that last eight and nine, eight to 9,000 RPM range where it just shrieks. It's very clear that the sound in this car is separated from the cabin, unlike in the GT4 RS. But it gives an equally as satisfying feeling because you can feel the vibrations running through the car. It's so sick. I even argue that I like this exhaust better. It's not quite shouting in your ears like the Cayman, rather it is singing. This car is punchier too. Despite only having 30 more horsepower than the GT3 RS, you can feel a lot of that low end brunt that's missing in the GT4. Much like the GT4, the PDK transmission in this car is lightning fast. I do think that the, the GT3 RS offers a slightly more ex aggressive shifting experience with some burbles coming out of the exhaust on downshifts and also cracks on upshifts. It's so fun. And that's not just because this car has an exhaust on it. It will do that from factory from my former experience with the car. This is also due to the fact that the Cayman GT4 RS shares nearly the exact same exhaust system setup as the regular GT4, which ends up being very restrictive to the GT3 engine. And that's where Porsche says the GT3 RS gets its extra 30 horsepower from. So handling, how does Phil's car compare to the GT4 RS? Well, it's worth noting that Phil has a full suspension setup on this, so I'll be speaking mostly off of my own experience with my former GT3 RS. For starters, the ride on the GT3 RS seems to be a little nicer. Now, that is not the case with Phil's car because it is a very stiff riding car. But from my former experience, with the stock suspension setup on my GT3 RS, uh, yes, it is still extremely firm. You're gonna feel the bumps in the road, but it's just a little smoother than the GT4, and I think it's because of that longer wheelbase. Now, of course, this is a Porsche 911, so the engine is sitting over top of the rear wheels. This means that the weight redistribution is nowhere near as even as the GT4 RS. But what does that mean in practice? I'll mention again that getting a proper alignment on these cars is so fundamental to being able to take advantage of the full capabilities of your car, even on a back road, and especially on the track. The GT3 RS is shockingly good at corner entry. It dives into the corners very effortlessly. This is partly due to the all-wheel steering system that's on the car. So on a nice twisty back road, you're really able to take advantage of the all-wheel steering and help it guide you into the turns. 
If you know how to drive a Porsche 911 properly, then you will absolutely be able to fly on any back road that you want. But the main difference between the Cayman and the GT3 is the corner exit. The GT3 RS puts most of its weight over the rear tires, which means you have to be a little more precise when you're exiting the turn and you can't get on the power quite as early. It's worth noting that both cars have extremely high tolerances and it's very hard to reach the limits on the street unless you're really trying to push the car to its limits. But when you do eventually lose traction in either car, the GT3 RS likes to be a little more troublesome. If you get on the power too early exiting a turn or let off the throttle or brake sharply while you're in the middle of a turn, the car becomes unsettled very quickly. You can feel that rear end want to try to come around. Now, if you have traction on, it's very likely that you're going to be just fine. The car knows how to recover itself. But with traction control off, or if you just are pushing the limits too far, maybe it's too cold outside for your tires to get traction, that weight is going to want to bring the back end of the car around. And that is one of the major differences between the GT4 RS and this, is you have to be a little bit more on your toes when you're driving and acknowledging the limits of the car. But when you get it right, you are absolutely rewarded. As a seasoned driver, backroad bashing the GT3 RS exposes the occasional unsettling reality of a rear-engined vehicle. Put both cars on track, however, and you'll quickly find that that imbalance is nullified by the extra arrow that's put on the GT3 RS. This car produces much more downforce than the GT4 RS, which is why it still boasts a slightly faster lap time than the GT3 RS around the Nuremberg ring. I think both cars are incredibly special, but little things about the GT3 RS just excite me a little bit more. Some of those being the little pops between the shifts, the way the engine vibrates the car when you're accelerating, and the way that this thing enters corners unbelievably fast. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. So after a lovely drive in the Colorado mountains, I'm left with two questions to answer. Which car is objectively better, and which car do I prefer? I think the answer to the first question is obvious, the Cayman. The GT4 RS is a precision instrument. It does everything exceedingly well and lacks bad characteristics even when you push the car to its limits. The sound of the motor is adrenaline inducing, and frankly, it's a beautiful thing to look at. But which would I rather own? And my answer has to be the 2019 Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Despite its imperfect weight distribution and the occasional slip up under high performance driving, this is what draws me to the car. I want to tame the beast that is the GT3 RS. The punch of the low end torque in the 3 RS gives it that extra umph over the Cayman and the vibrations from the GT3 RS exhaust send chills down my spine. Plus, just look at it, it looks like a race car. I can't stress enough, it's comparing apples to oranges. It's a miracle that Porsche decided to put their coveted GT3 engine in the Cayman at all, and it's amazing to think how far the Cayman platform has come in the past 17 years. The Cayman GT4 RS is gonna suit many drivers better than the 911, but at the end of the day, I want the car with the most emotion. And for me, that's the GT3 RS.